Hello everyone. Welcome to my walk around of a toy hauler camper I've built. But uh, if you watch any of my channel, and not many people do, but I'm a, I ride motorcycles. I've got a sport sport bike that I take the track a lot, but I also like to ride it on the on the road. But uh, so I'll use this to load the bike up and just take off and wind up wherever I wind up and ride the local roads and uh, pull the bike back in it and head home if I want to or just find a local Walmart parking lot or what have you and just you know spend the night it's a it's a convenient way for me to get out and get away from the house and just go ride the motorcycle and still be semi-comfortable you don't have to worry about you know loading and unloading the motorcycle so much and, and you know, Anyway, it's it's really convenient. I had a I had a store bought toy hauler and it was much nicer. It was also twice as expensive and you could tell it just wasn't gonna hold up, you know, they depreciate so much over over the years and it wasn't as tall and it, it just it never did suit me and so I bought this last fall. It's uh with the intent of doing what I've done to it. And I'm not done with it. There's still some things that need need to be done, but that's part of the fun, so uh, 16 foot long, 7,000 pounds, got the tandem, axle, tandem axles under it. Uh, eight foot tall, that's another plus the toy hauler I had, you can just barely fit underneath it. Got a, one of the first things I did was put 100, 112 volt to it. So it's got a RV style plug on it. You can get to an RV campsite and plug up your uh, plug up to the short power of the hour or hook a generator to it that kind of thing so and then you've got 30 amps of power inside when you need it it's the first hole I put in it scared me to death also got fresh water in it for now only five gallons but that's what this is so you can fill the fresh water tank up by pouring it in there or you can, when you're at an RV park or something, you can put a hose in it, hook a hose up to it, and then just then you've got pressurized water in it. You've got I'm gonna put an outdoor shower here, like you see on a lot of the RVs. Eventually, it's really a nice looking trailer. Looks good behind my black Dodge truck rolling down the road. Pretty stealth right now. Get the windows in; it'll be a little. A little, little more giveaway that you know it's a live-in kind of thing, but uh, 12,500 BTU AC unit on top, max air fan. That air conditioner was fun putting up by myself. Cutting the holes in the roof was scary. Drop down ramp. It's really nice. It's got the flip down thing at the end of it, so it rolls the bike up in there really nice. Should have it opened up, but anyway. Nice light LED light out here. RV door. Well, you supposedly can't lock yourself. Get locked in there. Here's the control power, control panel, power kind of thing. Switches to turn on, a water pump, water heater, the, the lights that we're talking about. So, give you your battery voltage and then you can charge. I'm, you know, charge things here and get USB port and you can get those on eBay, everybody sees it. Got a 4,000 watt inverter in here. So right now it's just got battery power but I'm turning the inverter on. And then this is a, a battery monitor. It'll tell you whether you're charging battery or how many amps you're drawing, how much amp capacity you got left in your battery. That kind of thing. So now the inverter's powered up. So now, just on battery power, I've got 110 volt to everything in there. You heard the, the microwave power up whenever, whenever it kicks on. So 
what's nice about this is, I mean, it's, it's also solar. I've got solar panels on the roof. And even though the inverter is running right now and the microwave's on, I can turn a fan or something on, but there's, so the battery was 100% charged anyway, but right now it's not, with the solar power, it's not draining the battery and it's, it's still charging it with just, of course, there's not a whole lot running. But you turn things on and see things. So now it's discharging 0.3 amps. Anyway, it's nice to have when it really starts kicking when you turn the microwave on. I'll turn the toaster oven on here real quick if I can think of it and show it. But anyway, it'll it'll pull 140, 50 amps just for that toaster oven. Anyway, that way you can watch your battery power. But with with the system I've got, it's got I've got 200 amp hours of which I only use about 100, so. I can cook meals and use microwave and then the toaster oven and make me some coffee and watch TV, that kind of stuff, you know, all night long and probably really conservative. I could go a couple of days on just battery power if, if nothing else, you know, where to charge up the battery. Sun pops out, it'll charge the battery anytime the trailer's hooked to the truck, the truck will charge the batteries. And then if you've got the, you know, if I want to run the air conditioner, uh, or I, I need, you know, more power than that, I can hook the the generator up to it and, and charge batteries and have a 110. But the idea was to have, not have to hook up to anything, just be able to have all the power I needed for a, a day or two and uh, be self-sufficient, off-grid, I think they call it. So I've, I've achieved that, but that's, that's all the power stuff. So, got lights in here on one set on a switch up in the roof that turn on and off with that, and then you can turn them on and off individually. Those came in the trailer, and I've added some from here, here, and there. So for the lights, then there's one back there on the wall, and then right over there in the bottom is another power source to charge things up USB that kind of so it's another 12 volt outlet to and then I can turn the lights on and off back there 120 volt plugs four or five of them in here they're all on 15 amp circuits the AC is on a 20 amp circuit got breakers going on all the cabinets I built myself uh, the cabinets up front primarily are just for counter space, and but yeah, you know, uh, those cabinets over there hiding all the electrical stuff I'll show in a minute, and most of the water tanks and hot water heater, that kind of thing, are under this counter. This cabinet is all the storage, got a whole lot of storage bins in here, I've got more storage than I don't know what to do with right now, and then cabinet for everything kind of else cooking while we're in here I'll show too I've also added a, a diesel heater that's the heating unit nice little thing it runs off diesel fuel that's the vent running out and then got a little controller there on the wall and then got a diesel tank I may situate something like that outside but really efficient I heated this whole trailer for a week, I think, just not super warm and it wasn't super cold outside, but it heated this whole thing for a week before I ran out of diesel fuel, keeping it, you know, 60 degrees, 70 degrees in here with it being 20s and 30s outside, so can't complain about that. Uh, refrigerator, of course, to run, that's 120, the refrigerator's 120. Microwave and toaster oven are 120 volt. TV's 120 volt. And the AC is 120 volt. To be able to work any of these things, you've got to be plugged into shore power or the inverter on or uh, that kind of thing. Or the generator running. Coffee pot, but got a, of course, a sink with running water. Reach over here and I can turn the water pump on. Uh, 
and reach over here and I could turn there's a switch over here for a hot water heater I turn it on and it's a 120 volt hot water heater and uh, there's the tanks water heaters over here and then the drains but uh turn the hot water heater on i'll have hot water in 15 minutes and it'll stay hot for a long while so you don't have to leave it on but wash dishes or get the outdoor shower something to take a shower if you needed to just you got hot water when needed 15 minutes away all the power is under here and the solar controller <laughs> controlling the solar and when you're plugged up to shore power or you've got that'll charge your batteries there's the 4000 watt inverter there's the two batteries down there in the corner all the shunts and shutoffs and heavy cabling to to run the inverter and put out the massive <laughs> I've seen 160 amps through that thing just trying to run everything back here and then there's a another automatic switch that'll switch you from shore power to inverter or back and forth if, if you were to lose power it's an automatic switch so at least the 120 will always stay on if the inverter's on but it'll it, it detects which which mode your 120 volts you've got and it'll it'll switch between the two and then you can't see it and there's a there's a I had to make a circuit breaker panel back there all the, the circuit breakers for the 120 volt circuits in here uh, pots and pans ceiling fan this thing really pulls a lot of air so now yeah I've got lights on and that fan on and of course the sun's not direct at it now but so I'm pulling a couple amps Still got 100% battery power, 13.36 volts. Anyway, handy as hell. AC, I can't run it on the inverter. You've got to have the generator on or hooked up to shore power. It just pulls too much current on the startup. I think if it could get, I know if I could get past that, it would run because it only pulls about 14, 15 amps, so my inverter would do that, but it just won't do the startup, so I can, so I'm, I can run the fan, but if the compressor were to kick on right now, it would, it would, the inverter would say, nope, not gonna happen. And you see, so now I'm pulling 20 amps. Turn everything off for noise. The bed is where it is for now. I'm got, I'm got the next thing I'm going to do. I've got a couple things I want to do, but the bed is where it's at, so that you can load the motorcycles and have them and haul things underneath it and still have a place to sleep. I'll be the first. It's not movable. And I'll be the first to admit it sucks <laughs> climbing out of that thing at two o'clock in the morning, half asleep, climbing out of that little ladder. If you're a big guy like me, but I mean it's functional. I'm going to put some tracks on it and make the bed be able to travel basically three quarters of this wall up and down so you get to a campsite or the track and get everything unloaded you can drop the bed down to floor level you know a decent level to climb in and out of and sleep and then this configuration whenever you're hauling something and then if you get done with that so if, you know if you had bikes in here you could still sleep and pull over whatever when you're traveling but and then get it up against the ceiling out of the way whenever you're not sleeping or you know if you want to use this other this space for anything else when you're camping or at the track uh, I, can't remember. I mentioned the TV but just antenna you get somewhere but it's it's internet ready what have you so it's got all the apps and stuff on it, YouTube and Google and you know the web browser that kind of thing so I, my cell phone I've got a personal hotspot data something so I just you know Wi-Fi to my phone and then I can as long as I've got cell phone service, I've got data, I can watch my YouTube videos or check my emails or you know, surf, surf the internet anyway, so that works out real nice. Plenty of cabin space. Eventually, the other mods is, of course, I've got 
a little porta potty there, which works just fine, surprisingly well. But eventually, I'm going to put a, a nice enclosed shower commode thing here and have to put another tank under, or you know, black tank they call it, and a gray water tank. So, but that's another something to happen in the future. I've got enough space there for it. Anyway. last thing is you gotta have safety things when you're running generators a carbon monoxide detector and then a fire extinguisher and a dirty laundry thing that's where I store that whatever so that's an overview of my trailer my toy hauler oh, I don't think I mentioned it you know when I first got it the walls I, I yanked everything out and ran all the electrical in it but it's it's been insulated so the, these walls were here but I painted them and I've insulated it and then I added insulation in the roof and then put the ceiling tiles in that was fun to do by myself also but insulated everywhere but the floor and then i'll get the floor eventually painted the floors just i'll probably put some kind of nice something in this area to, to walk on look at and then i'll keep obviously the toy hard with part of it like it is but still a lot to do thanks for looking and Hope you enjoy this, and hope you got any questions or anything. Shoot some comments them down. I'll try to try to answer them. So this is my this is my toy hauler. Have a good one.